There's no hard and fast line as to when a hockey prospect becomes a hockey suspect, but it's probably in the mid-20s. Good morning to you. Good Monday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into football and or baseball, I also offer Daily Shots of Steelers and Pirates where you found this. I am convinced that a 30-year-old Ricard Raquel is a better player than he's ever been. What's more, I'm convinced that Raquel still has an untapped ceiling, which sounds preposterous on two levels, I'll acknowledge. One is that earlier in his career in Anaheim, when the Ducks had talent before they really stunk for about half a decade, including now, he was a 30-goal guy. He was a slam-dunk 30-goal guy. Now, he was 30 goals and fewer assists, but he was 30 goals. And you'll take 30 goals from anybody in your top six and not worry about anything else. If they pump 30 goals, you're happy. But the Raquel that I saw and that I've seen now for a couple seasons in Pittsburgh just keeps getting incrementally better at a lot of different things, little things. I don't know what it is about this dude that his hockey IQ is so spectacularly high, but I see from him on a consistent basis the ability to not only adapt, but to create off openings that weren't previously there, even if it's not an MO that he's previously shown. You're going to want me to give you a specific example of this, and I've got one for you, and it might be the one you would have expected. Because once he was put onto Power Play 1, once he was given a spot there, he was kind of told not so much what he should do, But what everyone else was going to do, because when you go on to a power play with Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin, Chris Letang, and Jake Gensel, and remember that Raquel was taking a struggling Brian Rust spot on that unit, it's about what they're doing, not what you're doing. And Raquel turned that, and I'm not guessing at this, I've been told this, He turned that into an opportunity to become the left half wall guy. And because he was so effective at it, he started to take charge of the power play, like literally take charge of a power play that had those guys I just mentioned to you on it. And even though Mike Sullivan loves Rust, And I do, too. I'm not knocking him for it. And I'd been positive that at the very first opportunity, as he's always done with Russ, he was going to put Russ right back into the slot where he was before because he trusts him so implicitly. That didn't happen. And it didn't happen because Raquel just kept getting better at everything that was out there. All the little things. The retrievals, the ability to wait for a point man to go ducking in. And then toward the end of the regular season, he was able to put himself into a position that I've only seen Phil Kessel do in his time with Pittsburgh. Meaning not only was he a half wall guy, but he could roam and he would roam all over the place. He'd take over a point. He'd go to the right wall. And no one was scripting that. You know that. We talk about that. We just mentioned it on a show last week. There's no X's and O's for that power play. But you still have to gain the respect, the understanding of everybody around you. And when you see Raquel doing these things in Pittsburgh and you didn't see him doing those things or even trying those things the previous season in Pittsburgh – You're talking about a player who's not just looking to maintain his status quo. He's constantly looking for ways to expand his repertoire. Now, 
if you've heard that description applied to other guys on the Penguins roster, you've probably heard them applied to both Sidney Crosby, uh, but especially, since we're talking about him quite a bit on this Raquel segment, Rust. There's a different skill set that they're looking to attack each year, each summer. Maybe it's just a little back pass to somebody that's one touch off the very heel of the blade. Those are really complicated. But if you do them often enough and the situation comes up in a game and you pull it off, wow, hey, dude, where'd you get that, right? Raquel's 30 years old. And yet I still maybe naively view him as one of the younger guys on the team, partly because of this and partly because of his skating style that makes him feel omnipresent on the rink. He, he covers so much ground with that big stride of his. Now, having this discussion and not a, not uh, sharing with you some sort of projection for the coming season feels like it would be a little bit irresponsible. So I'll offer a couple. One, Raquel is going to give Sullivan no choice but to keep him on the top power play. Unless Sullivan just completely loses his mind and defers excessively to names over performance. And here's hoping that he doesn't. He's done in the past, but here's hoping he doesn't. And on top of that, you've got Eric Carlson on this group who's looking for someone down low all the time. And Raquel is always available, way more than what you would know because the Penguins point men didn't get him, didn't feed him the way they should have last season. I am predicting right here a very, very big season for Raquel. One that's better than the previous season because that's kind of how it goes with players who are constantly improving. When we come back, J1Q. This segment of Daily Shot is brought to you by Family Table, a local company that brings delicious food to busy families. They offer family-style complete meals or a la carte items like lean proteins, perfect for muscle building and weight loss. If you're not local... Gift cards are also available for your Pittsburgh-based family and friends. Go to FamilyTablePGH.com. That's FamilyTablePGH.com. And use the code DK40 or DK40 for 40% off and free delivery on your first order. Order by noon today for Thursday delivery. from Sam, who says, DK, it seems like with the addition of Eric Carlson, the Penguins are going to play like it's the 70s again. Those were fun teams, even when they weren't playoff qualifiers. Sam, that was uh, before my time. I'm aware of the names. I'm aware of some of the, the backgrounds and the stories, and I'm aware that those teams did some scoring. Pierre LaRouche, the Century Line, Jean Pronovo, Sillaps. Lowell McDonald, and even into the later 70s when Rick Kehoe came along, you had guys who could score goals, but I have not really ever heard anyone describe them as being a, a, a go-go type of team. Uh, I don't know that the Penguins were ever really connected to any kind of fire wagon brand until a good two or three years into the Mario Lemieux era. So if you were looking for some kind of comparison point for when the Penguins really only cared about offense, you're probably best off drawing a parallel, I think, with the mid-90s, meaning even after the first two Stanley Cups. That was when it went just ballistic toward an offensive aim. Uh, Everything, everything, everything was about offense. And as I wouldn't need to have to remind anybody who lived through that era, they didn't win. They didn't win championships. They were entertaining as hell, and they helped get a few more people into the Hall of Fame, I'm sure. But they didn't win. In fact, they lost some series that they had no business losing. Like Obviously, most obviously, the one in 96 
to the Panthers, but then before that in 93 to the Islanders. But to address your actual question, no, no, I, I don't think you're going to see any kind of offense only approach, not just because of who the head coach is and what he believes, but more important because it won't work. It just won't. There's nobody doing that in the NHL, at least not successfully. And if that sounded like yet another of my gazillion random shots at the Edmonton Oilers, so be it. Because they don't win anything because they can't defend. They get themselves into a certain situation where they'll score some goals, but ultimately you have to be able to prevent too, and they aren't. They don't. They don't invest anywhere near enough on the blue line, and they definitely don't invest anywhere near enough in goal. And so they are who they are. The Penguins... You know, I can't make this point strongly enough. Somehow, some way, Mike Sullivan and staff are going to have to sell, first and foremost, the team's leaders on a concept of defending first. I really, truly believe this. They've all put up a zillion points in their lifetime. They don't need any more points, but they know that when they create those chances, they're going to be able to capitalize. But there can't be any cheating. Now, they did this, by and large, I thought, the top six over this past season. I thought Sid and Gino did more than their part in this regard. But they had no bottom six. <laughs> and they had really, really shaky goaltending. So it's all got to come together. So that's the part that I like about Sullivan and Kyle Dubas teaming up to come up with a philosophy for what's wanted from the bottom six and defense was prioritized, what's wanted from the defense core and defense with the notable exception of Carlson was prioritized. Will there be enough? I don't know. Will there be goaltending? I don't know. But should defending be the number one priority? I definitely know. And I can promise you it's going to be the first thing you hear from Sullivan when training camp opens. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. We'll do another one of these tomorrow.